Now, if you're out talking to somebody and you want to witness your faith and you're talking to them and you say something about Jesus and they say something like this, well, yeah, you know, I, I try to live right. I try to do what, what Jesus tells me to do. And you say, well, well, do you know if you're going to heaven? And they say, well, you know, I, I, I think I've, I've done pretty well. I, I've been doing okay. You know, I, I, I read the Bible and I, you know, I try to be a nice person and I try to do, you know, this. And when you talk to people and, and they say things like that to you, they are betraying something to you, aren't they? They are betraying to you that they have no clue what it takes to get to heaven. Because it's not just trying hard and doing your best and, and that that gets you into heaven. It is righteousness that gets you to heaven. It is perfect righteousness that gets you to heaven. And if when you're talking to somebody and they, and they say that and, and, and you are bold enough to set them straight and to say, well, I hate to tell you this, but even as nice of a person as you are, that's not going to get you to heaven. And then you, start, you can talk about sin, and you can talk about sin in your own life, and you can say, yeah, I try to be a nice person too, but man, I fail. And when I look at God's law and I see the righteous requirements that he gives, man, it's awful. And God, but God says that you've got to be perfect in order to get to heaven. So I realize daily that I'm not. And then that person might say, well, yeah, you know what? I'm not perfect. And, and even though I try, I still, if God, that's God's standard, then I'm toast. And then you can bring to them this awesome message about Jesus. You could say, yeah, I know. And it's awful that we can't fulfill all righteousness because what we deserve for that is eternal death. But you know, that's why Jesus came to earth. He didn't come to earth just to tell us the rules or give us an example to live by. Jesus Christ came to fulfill all that righteousness for us that we can't fulfill. And he, he did it even at his own baptism because God says you know, that he gives us baptism as his blessing for us for the forgiveness of sins. And, and Jesus did every tiny little thing. Jesus did for us in order to fulfill all righteousness so that we have his perfect life given to us. And that's the awesome story, right? The old, old story that I love to tell. The one where Jesus Christ comes and does for us what we cannot do for ourselves and takes the time out of his busy schedule in heaven to become a human being and walk this earth to do everything in our place and to do it perfectly. That's the first part of Jesus' substitutionary act for us and in his life so that we have the assurance, dear friends, that when we fail, Jesus has already succeeded for us. And then the second part of this lesson is more specific to baptism and what baptism means for us. If you look in your bulletins, after John baptized uh, Jesus, it says, As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Just as soon as Jesus he went up, and a miraculous thing happened. The whole triune God made its presence, made his presence known in the voice of the Father, in the dove that comes down, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ, the Savior, standing there. And the whole triune God, at the moment of baptism, manifests himself and says, yep, this is all true. This one who was just baptized in the Jordan River by John the Baptist is the one, the true Son of God who fulfills all righteousness for the sake of the whole world. And it's really a cool thing when you think about it to see how the whole Trinity makes its presence known at the baptism of Jesus. 
There at baptism is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit speaking about how this act of Jesus Christ is one of fulfillment of righteousness. Because, dear friends, that whole triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, is the same God that appears to you and to me when we are baptized. Because it's in that name of the one true God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that God comes to us and He says to us, because Jesus is our substitute, He comes to us and He says, This is my child whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Because everything that happened to Jesus and everything that he did to fulfill all righteousness is given to you and to me by God because of Jesus' righteousness. And in our baptisms, God gives us Jesus' perfect fulfillment of righteousness on our behalf. And he plants his name and his seal of approval on each and every one of us as he fills us with his Holy Spirit to trust in Jesus as our Savior from sin. He says, you now, with you, I am well pleased. Let me put it to you this way. Uh, Let's say a pitcher, a major league pitcher. And you're out there and you want to you, you do your best as a pitcher. And so you're out and you start pitching. First pitch. And it's a wild pitch. All right, try again. Second pitch. And it's a wild pitch. Try again. Pitch the third pitch. And it's a wild pitch. And over and over again, you're just pitching wild pitches and you're hitting batters and you're doing all this crazy stuff and you can't get it right. You can't seem to throw a strike. You're miserable at it. So what does the coach do? He goes to the bullpen, and he pulls out a different pitcher, and he says, let that pitcher try it. And that pitcher comes out, strike, 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 strike. And all that pitcher does is pitches fastball strikes all the way down. That substitute has just done what you can't do, right? But now think about it this way. Who gets the statistics for that game? By all rights, you get the statistics, right? Wild pitches, hitting batters, and your stats are tanked. And who gets the statistics for the substitute? The substitute gets statistics for throwing perfect game, those perfect strikes every single time. And that's the way it should be by rights, right? You get what you earn. You get the stats that you earn. But that's what's so different about Jesus Christ and his fulfillment of all righteousness as our substitute. You see, Jesus Christ did come in to pitch the perfect strikes for us because we cannot. But in the end, Who gets the stats? By God's decree, placing his name upon us through the work of Jesus Christ, God says, I am giving to you the statistics of your substitute. Your stats, they're gone. Jesus' stats are yours. And when we are baptized into Jesus' name, into the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, God says, I am giving you Jesus' perfect game and his righteousness for your sake that he fulfilled for you. That is awesome. And the next time that you are feeling labored down because you are not living up 
to the way that God would have you live, go to your substitute. Look at him again. Look certainly at his perfect death. But also look to his perfect life for you. That everything that he did to fulfill all righteousness has been given to you so that you can live confidently now because you know you have eternity with him. May this be your peace and your comfort, dear friends. Amen.